so as introduced i am aradi uh, working as national coordinator with district facilitation division um, i act as coordinator between palim india and regional coordinators across india so uh, let me brief about uh, state facilitation team first um, we as a division try to take the work that palim india does to various regions in india uh, with a vision to facilitate the access to palliative care to all those who are in need details will follow later uh, in the later slides uh, i'll be explaining in detail about the state facilitation division um, this session will brief you about how you can open a palliative care center in your region you may be already part of some uh, hospitals or individually you may have some clinics we shall guide you on how to start a palliative care service in your setting please feel free to clarify queries we'll be happy to help so shall we go shall we start yeah no responses a thumbs up from everyone okay thank you dhanwanti right Dr. yes you yeah. may start thank you thank you so much so we shall move on uh, the slide that you are seeing right now is a who palliative care advocacy triangle uh, as per who to set up a successful palliative care center or to organize a palliative care service we need to ensure three things one is education next is drug availability and third is policy and implementation so uh, when we talk about education the, there are barriers to palliative care which will have to be uh, which will have to overcome through education so one is lack of awareness among professionals lack of awareness among the administrators and lack of awareness among among the public so it is essential to educate the public the public demand does persuade the professional and the administrators to think so that's what education uh, awareness through education will help you with next is drug availability so uh, pain relief is the integral part in palliative care and for that uh, availability and accessibility of pain relief drugs is necessary morphine is the mainstay of pain management and its availability has been eased to a small extent by the amendment of ndps uh, act in uh, 20, 2014 but most of the states are yet to implement them that's that's the part of drug availability next is policy and its implementation in much of the world palliative care came into being because the individual because of the individual uh, initiatives and action by non government organizations however to achieve the national coverage palliative care needs to be integrated into the general healthcare de delivery system government action is also needed to remove the barriers to access, uh, barriers to access of uh, pain relievers it is essential for budding services to develop their own po uh, policies that can overcome any gap in the available facilities. So when we plan a palliative care service, do well, do remember that you should be trained, you should have the opioid availability, uh, and there should be a policy or a program available to support your services. That's what it, this triangle means. Now we will move on into the palliative care in Indian, Indian context. Uh, so the delivery is broadly classified into three uh, major categories. One is standalone. Next is a department or a unit within a hospital, which can be government, charitable, sustainable, or a for-profit model. Sustainable will mean um, a subsidized model of uh, uh, delivery. Next is uh, community-based home care. So a standalone will mean a model which has had, which is an independent facility where we provide palliative care with specific focus on pain and symptom management and improving the quality of life for patients as well as family. This can be done through a hospice or a palliative care center. Now, uh, next is a department or a unit within a hospital. There will be a dedicated department uh, for palliative care attached to a well-established organization. It, it might be a government organization, a government hospital, a charitable hospital, a sustainable or a for-profit hospital. Mm -hmm. The major thing that comes is uh, the third one, the community-based home care. Here, uh, 
this is where the community gets involved and this is what we follow here we'll uh, explain it in detail um, uh, in coming slides i'll just brief about what a community based home care will me mean here we reach to the care receiver where they are that's what the concept is so the social capital act as the bridge between the micro and macro component and the social capital here means the volunteers. Ne uh, so these are some uh, standalone hospices. Uh, the first one is the CIPLA pain, uh, pain and Palliative Care, which is a training center as well. Next, uh, that's in Pune. Uh, next is uh, Ruma Vedana Hospice. And the third one, which you can see, is the PGI Chandigarh Hospice. Next. Uh, these are a few departments which are attached within a hospital. Uh, the one guy who can, whom you can see is our regional coordinator who works with this, uh, you know, uh, this region. Next is uh, now coming to the uh, next uh, community model that I was talking about. Uh, here the difference between now now we are uh, the third this is the third category um uh, so now uh, you can see two units here one is micro and macro uh the micro will uh now the you know the community concept comes into picture wherein the micro is not uh, you know accessible uh, to the delivery palliative care delivery services now the meso next here is the meso component that comes into picture where the volunteers help the uh, delivery from the micro element to reach the micro element are you uh, with me understood yes yeah okay thank you thank you for the responses i can see the faces also <laughs> uh, now, uh, the Kerala model, the Kerala model it has utilized the power of community model, which might not work in the setting where you belong. Uh, but we would like to bring it to it as an example for you. Uh, we call it a prototype with which we can get an idea and uh, how you can move forward with the setting up of the services. So this we can uh, you know, uh, this will help you how to, uh, you know, uh, yeah, we'll give an idea how we work here so that you can get an idea how you can, uh, uh, you know, deliver palliative care services in your setting. Uh, next, uh, this is Nair Uncle. Um, he is a volunteer of ours. Um, uh, he came into our system uh, where, um, while his uh, wife was uh, our care receiver he came in as a caregiver uh, his wife uh, was diagnosed with cancer and she died in 2004 but and after that he was with us as a full-time volunteer so uh, he will uh, you know uh, at, at palim india we have uh, eight eight vehicles going out every day for home care so he was in charge of uh, city home care, uh, you know, uh, within the city limits. So he wasn't given the charge. He took it by himself. And uh, every patient whom he uh, he visits, uh, he knows the full history uh, of that patient. And he was the first point of contact for those patients. The patients felt relieved when he came in touch with uh, uh, them and they were more comfortable speaking to him. So that's what a volunteer should be like a person who actively takes care on the task responsibility of the project on his or her accord without needing to be assigned or order. He wasn't at, a, at all ordered to do so. He was taking this this as his own responsibility. And that's what the, uh, you know, uh, the beautiful the beauty of that's what the beauty of community volunteership is. Uh, you know, uh, that's the magic that we see in Kerala. Next, now we'll be moving into the crux of the session, how to organize the palliative care services. We have made a 10 step approach. It's just a basic flow. It's not a concrete rule that you should follow these all, uh, you know, in this uh, uh, flow itself. 
but yeah all these things come into uh, uh, into into our purview when you are starting a palliative care center first one of course is the arranging of funds before starting to organize the whole program we need to think of that first so if you are a government hospital there are many funds available there, there are funds available uh, through various programs like nppc uh, ayushman bharat and all for private of course you are selling your services so and you can get the funds through the services uh, the charges that you off, uh, you know put on for your services next is for charitable or individuals it's a, actually a challenge but yeah uh, for them we can go for you know some csr or public donations that's how palim india works so uh, before starting a palliative care ser service you should have a thought in your mind how which source you will be opening you will you will be op opting for next uh, recruitment of training uh, recruitment of a team which is trained so here this is another uh, aspect uh, in a uh, important aspect of setting up a palliative care service um, that is uh, having a trained team so now you all are being trained in palliative care so you have a person in your team right now and uh, uh, the first thing that uh, you will have uh, to uh, as a team it's a it's a basic unit should be a doctor a nurse a social officer that's consist of a um, basic team and moving forward when you grow up you can have uh, allied medical professionals like pharmacist physiotherapist occupational therapist etc based on your services that you provide but these all people should be trained in palliative care that's what the requirement is Next thing that you would need is a uh, infrastructure. It can be a room for an OP or a space uh, and furniture um, uh, for inpatient if you are setting up an inpatient unit. And in case of a home care, you will have a vehicle uh, which can be used by the basic unit team uh, and uh, carry the medicines that you need for patient care. Next point would be procuring opioids. Um, so as, as we mentioned earlier that uh, drug availability is one of the major aspects for starting a palliative care or organizing a palliative care service. Um, so uh, here uh, to procure, store, dispense opioids, you'll need to be a recognized medical institution. It's a lot of information required for understanding that topic. You'll have a, a session on opioid availability. So in, uh, that would be completely focusing on how to you, how you will procure uh, store and dispense opioids so that session is fully um, dedicated to opioid uh, procurement and everything so you'll have a detailed session on that uh, next is you need to establish connects with existing experts in palliative care in your region uh, this will help you to understand the local challenges and support available so uh, that's where the community that, that's where the volunteers come into picture or maybe somebody may not be a volunteer you'll have to have a um, relationship in uh, uh, within the community so that you need, you uh, can know the challenges that uh, you're going to face further and also the support that is available within the community next is uh, you need to aware, uh, create an awareness session within the community and uh, for your team as well so if you are running a parity care service in a, a hospital so other departments that uh, members of other departments should also know what is palliative care and through which you can you will get reference from the um, from the team so uh, uh, from the team as well as from the public to to get the reference you'll need to create an awareness in the uh, public uh, next is um, and through awareness one more thing you will get is champions uh, within your community so uh, identification of volunteers will also help you uh, uh, through this awareness Next is developing an OP that I um, had mentioned before. You just need a you know a local hall, uh, classrooms like we at Palim India uh, have uh, schools. Uh, we have schools uh, which have offered a classroom for conducting OP. We have uh, banks uh, which have 
you know, offered us uh, auditoriums, the bank auditoriums, uh, uh, a small space in bank auditoriums where we can keep our consumables, the medicines, a table, a, a, a two, three chairs. Just that much space is enough for conducting an OP. So in a in a hospital, if you're working in a hospital, you will have you just have to have a room which can accommodate uh, a basic unit team and the um, a, a table, a chair and basic furnishing and if you are not uh, uh, if you are dispensing opioids you ju you'll just have have to have a cupboard which is which has double locking system the legal systems uh, everything will be taught in the opioid uh, uh, availability session but it's the basic thing that you need to understand that opioids should be kept in a double locking system so you'll need to have if you are conducting uh, just an op you'll need to have a small uh, locker also just to uh, ensure that the opioids are safe. Um, now, the, for developing an inpatient facility, this will involve a little more infrastructure in terms of uh, beds for patients, side lockers, etc. Now, for home care, as uh, as, sir, as said earlier, you will need a vehicle which can accommodate a team of doctor, nurse, and a social worker, and the medicines and consumables which are needed for the patient care. Now, there are scenarios where a doctor uh, drives a two-wheeler with a bag of medicines and go for home care. So, uh, it's the passion that drives palliative care delivery. Uh, we, have, uh, we have seen such scenarios also. Uh, next is volunteers. Uh, so that uh, while create uh, that's what I mentioned earlier. Like when you create awareness, you get the local champions who will be able to help you to build your community, uh, the volunteer base also. Uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's just a basic flow that you need to follow. Uh, you can take anything that you know. If if you have funds, you just have to have a team and. Uh, infrastructure and opioids if you have a team of uh, volunteers you just have to uh, you know uh, this will, uh, create awareness within uh, within the team and start the palliative care services um, so that's how it works whichever you have you just have to have the next uh, uh, flow uh, the component coming in any any doubts till now no can move forward okay so now this is a um, strategy for financial delivery models that we offer um, this is how we support or facilitate parity care services uh, with models that were already discussed government for-profit charitable and sustainable model um, capacity building is one of the major support that we are providing um, workshop orientations foundation trainings that we are now going through um, then training of uh, faculty for UG curriculum uh, training and engagement of volunteers uh, specialized trainings like pali covid physio for physiotherapist pulmonologist and in government we support uh, we, we support in training of uh, chos ashas ANNs, etc so that's how the capacity building works for opioid availability uh, we support in getting the NDPS Act implemented wherever the in whichever states is not implemented. We talk with the government. We have we we do discussions with the state control uh, state drug controller, the NHM uh, head and all. We do talk with them to get the NDPS Act implemented to aware, to make them aware about the amendment that came into uh, in the in the Act, and then we uh, make them aware the. Uh, you know the exact need uh, in the society uh, through which they try and implement the NDPS Act. Um, and uh, for medical institutes, uh, we uh, help them know about the new uh, RMI process and uh, help them get the RMIs also. We facilitate the process. So uh, we work them in getting the applications filled. We help them you know, uh, make them aware what all things are required for an RMI application. So uh, that's what we support for availability of opioids. Next is uh, 
uh, we do the hand holding for PCUs at district levels. PCUs in the sense palliative care units at district levels uh, connect the local palliative care networks and we provide documentation and assistance support as well. Uh, developing pr uh, program implementation plan for a state, implementation of NPPC, development of palliative care through he health and wellness centers under Aishman Bharat scheme. Palimedia contributes towards developing a state palliative care policy, which we do have regular connect uh, with the Ministry of uh, Health and Family Welfare for developing the palliative care in state. Uh, we have, uh, we help in recruiting human resources for starting a palliative care center. Uh, we have a process now, the implementation and monitoring thing, we have a process in our uh, uh, this is a new process, it's, it's in a budding state where we send an implementation team of doctors, nurse and a coordinator at your side. We'll stay with you, handhold your team through the process of setting up a palliative care center for a given period of time. So that's a new process, we haven't, uh, you know, we haven't started it uh, with any center, but it's, we are in talks with certain stakeholders for uh, sending our implementation team to their site. Uh, any questions in this slide? Uh, good afternoon, madam. Yeah, no. okay. yeah Dr. Sajid. So, yeah, yeah. I am uh, impressed about the um, hand-holding method. Probably many of us would like that to happen. So uh, we will definitely contact you, and uh, yeah. I think we will be we will be able to get the right uh, mix of things done from your side with our uh, yeah, to support us. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Dr. Vandana, you had raised your hand. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Ma'am, I have a uh, question. Actually, ma'am, uh, there are uh, certain uh, bodies which uh, are responsible for uh, 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 like screening the standards of the centers or for uh, uh, seeking permission and all. Of, of course, for opioids, we have to seek permission. But other than that, for setting up a establishment or a facility, uh, regarding the permissions, is there any protocol? Is it going to be discussed or... Uh, is there a body which will, which will come for inspection? Uh, is there anything like that? Like uh, for medical colleges, we have an NMC. Then there are standards, NABH standards and also for uh, palliative care. Is there any body, anything no. like that? No, no. Till now, we don't have a body specifically for palliative care. But yeah, for hospitals, you need to be get, uh, you know, uh, we for palliative care center, hospital registration is a must. That what that's what we have. Okay. So you'll have to follow all the uh, protocols that you uh, you need to uh, run a hospital. Okay, ma'am. There is no affiliation to any body or anything. No. Till now, till now, no, no. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It may come in future. <laughs> so okay. till now, we don't have any bodies. Okay. Thank you. So shall we move forward? So this is, uh, these are the challenges in sectors that we have worked. Um, so the, these are the challenges that our regional coordinators have faced. Um, okay. Um, we, I can see Ethan Thomas raising his hand. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Sorry for the disturbance. Uh, just uh, who, do, who do we contact in Palim India to, for regarding, uh, uh, setting up the institution, this hand-holding, which, which you just discussed now? It's our team only. Um, uh, so, uh, I'll share you the... Uh, where, where do you belong from? You're muted. Kottam uh, district, Kanyaripalli, okay. Kerala. So, yeah. I'm only the person in charge right now. So, we'll be sharing our contact details soon through the chat box. So, you can get in touch with me. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, as I was telling, these are the challenges that uh, our, our regional coordinators uh, face while, you know, talking to our stakeholders. Uh, uh, I have listed it, the, you know, in, in two uh, 
faces, not, not faces actually, all the other sectors which we discussed, for profit, charitable and subsidized model uh, uh, and government as well as, these are uh, the ones which are listed under the government are phased only for governments. So we are working with all the sectors. So these are the challenges that we see while working with. So uh, you may also uh, face these while starting a palliative care center. Uh, one is of course, uh, you know, getting the funds and human resource, train, uh, trained uh, people in human, uh, sorry, trained people in palliative care people, trained people are very less, uh, even though we are training palliative care, uh, we are giving the training. Uh, when we, you know, go and start a center, we'll find it difficult for, but if you are, you know, there are, if you see or meet people who are interested to uh, start a uh, center, you can come back to us, we'll train them. Uh, next is regarding the opioids. When you go through the opioid uh, sessions available, uh, opioid workshop, you'll see how, what all things you need to take care of when you are dealing with opioids. So there people try to play safe because opioids itself is like a dangerous game to play with. <laughs> so people are very, uh, you know, reluctant to uh, get the opioids in their, uh, to, you know, they, they try to play, play safe uh, with opioids. Uh, inadequate knowledge. It's there in palliative care, even though we have, uh, you know, uh, even though we uh, have started palliative care long back, even then uh, people don't know about palliative care. Even now uh, you, you might have faced it uh, uh, yourself also, like end of life care is palliative care, only cancer patients get palliative care. These all are myths that is that's roaming around uh, for palliative care. So it's very difficult for, um, you know, us to convince people that palliative care is something else and not what you are thinking. Uh, it takes time to get, uh, you know, people educate on palliative care. Now, uh, yeah, the another thing that we face in government sector is that we, you know, train people, give six weeks course, these 20 session course and everything. And uh, uh, when, when they are going to start a parity center or a department, they get transferred. So now, once again, all the process has to be, uh, you know, uh, from the scratch, we have to start. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll answer it. Okay. Uh, uh, anything else you can you can go through these challenges and uh, you know if you feel like you have any questions in that you can ask me um, in northeast region our regional coordinator they, they face uh, uh, limitations in the funds uh, uh, another major thing is conflicts in the interdepartmental hierarchical approvals in the government sector it's a major thing that we face, um, you know, we would have uh, a way, um, you know, pray, um, talk to one person and his boss might not be willing to take it uh, further. There happens a problem uh, within the two departments. There happens a problem like one department is not working, you know, amicably with the other department. Then also we face issues. So those issues are uh might feel like you might feel that they, these are small small issues but it's very difficult to convince all people for that another thing that uh, we have seen is it's not a very lucrative business uh, we don't uh, we are not uh, it's not uh, it doesn't help to raise funds and few funders have also uh, you know uh, asked us why should we uh, fund uh, for dying people so we have seen such cases also. So that happens. Um, any any questions? Okay. Next. So um, this is a standard audit tool. Um, this is kind of a self evaluation for palliative care centers to know where we are standing. 
uh, so the, there are two parts part a and part b part a is essential uh, and part b is desirable so uh, the uh, the ones in the essential are the minimum requirement that is uh, that needs to be fulfilled while uh, having a palliative care center and uh, I have I have mentioned the link to this original document. Uh, this PPT will be shared with you. You can click on the link and go to the. This might not be visible right now for you all. So uh, that's a PDF form. form. Uh, I I just took the screenshots and uh, pasted it here. It won't be visible, but you can go to the PDF and then look in uh, by your own when it's shared. So it's just a. Um, self-explanatory thing a few things only yeah. uh, next we'll go to the palim india model uh, this is uh, the model that palim india follows right now it's called a def model uh, d as in demonstrate e educate and F facilitate uh, so that's how uh, we work here right now so this is the reason um, uh, all the works are um, you know, uh, all the work that Palim India do is in this circles. <laughs> so first, uh, we'll uh, go to uh, go through the demonstration model. Uh, that's the model that we follow here at Palim India. It's called uh, the center uh, in Trivandrum is called Trivandrum Institute of Palliative Sciences. Uh, we have patient care and uh, training here at um, tips so uh, in next uh, Trivandrum Institute of Palliative Sciences is a WHO collaborating center for training and policy for access to pain relief uh, here we have uh, inpatient care outpatient with, uh, link, uh, with with centers other centers as well as government hospitals uh, we have home care uh, rehabilitation and reintegration, uh, community participation, that's, uh, that we call link centers. So now, um, what is a link center? We'll, I, I'll explain a little bit about that. Um, at Pallium India, uh, as I already mentioned earlier, that we need to create awareness among the public. So uh, while creating awareness, uh, or for creating awareness, we approach um, a, a large public, they, it will be a maybe a residence association team or a rotary club team or some associations or library associations or anybody uh, it would be a normal public also so from there after when when we create a it will be our uh, in different different areas of uh, in our locality so for palim india it would be uh, uh, so we'll be going to these places and creating awareness we'll be uh, telling about palliative care um, now after we are done with the awareness sessions we get uh, references from the public or we, we could see few uh, you know people or a group of people who come together and uh, tell us that we need we want to start a palliative care service or we, we want to start a palliative care unit so now then we'll go uh, we'll approach these people they will create a society a registered body uh, they'll get themselves registered as a you know separate uh, in uh, a society uh, mostly it is a society registration that they do then they'll uh, and that would be in the community it's not uh, uh, you know it's not anywhere else it would be in the community where these volunteers are so now they are volunteers they are community volunteers these volunteers know where the need is where they have and they see a need in palliative care so now they'll refer palliative care patients then we'll uh, we'll then have a mou with them uh, that's how and we'll provide services through pallium india so like Palim India will be going to these link centers and from link centers to these patients. That's how the component, the the if you remember the micro macro uh, miso component works. We'll be uh, taking our delivery uh, palliative care delivery to the micro component through these uh, through miso component through these link centers. So uh, 
uh, we will have our doctor, we will have our nurse, we will have our social worker, the team would be ours. The link center volunteer will take us to the patient who is in need and then the paritic delivery happens. It will, it will go for a short period, or, or a period of time until the link center gets sustained by themselves. When we feel that they are self, uh, they are sustainable enough to run a parity care center, we'll, uh, this, uh, you know, we'll uh, retract our approach, uh, uh, we'll uh, retract our support, and then they'll start delivering parity care service at their end. This is how the implementation team also works. That's we that we were talking about here. We call them link centers. So these there are small small link centers all or all around uh, Trivandrum. Uh, right now we have 14 link centers like that. So there are 87 volunteers who are working in these link centers who are helping deliver palliative care in their area. Understood. Okay, uh, next is halfway home. Halfway home is a rehabilitation project that Pallium India is running. Uh, this is a rehabilitation for uh, spinal cord injury patients. Uh, you know, in 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 halfway home, so it's it's a it's a two bedded facility at Pallium India. Uh, it's a separate. Uh, it's not separated from the building. It's a separate area wherein uh, which is a wheelchair friendly area uh, wherein the patient can go and do things independently without depending on any other. We'll have a caregiver who who will um, assist him or her the patient. And then uh, the patient can move over around by himself or herself. So he doesn't need uh, anybody's support. That's what the training, we will be training them like that. So we'll help them train uh, to transfer from bed to wheelchair and vis-a-vis. -vis. So that's what the training, and we give them physiotherapy. And, and that's why it's got, so they'll have all facilities like, uh, like their homes. That, that's why it's called a halfway home. Uh, we'll identify patients who need this support and then uh, when they go at uh, go to their homes uh, after this training or this rehabilitation during this stay, their stay we'll also help them uh, you know uh, with vocational rehabilitation the uh, how they can earn by their own by sitting in the wheelchair itself how they can earn so that's all that also we'll be training them and when they go back to their homes their homes might not be uh, wheelchair friendly or friendly with the um, with, with their um, disability or their differently ableness. So there we'll be helping uh, them uh, maintain. Uh, we do will do the required maintenance with the help of the community volunteers and help. Uh, so their home will also be uh, um, uh, accessible to them uh, in their current situation. That's what we do with uh, in the halfway home project. So when when you you know uh, if you have um, uh, what you tell, if you um, want to come and visit us, please let us know. We'll be happy to have you here and show you all these things that we run here at Palim India. Uh, till now, we have catered to twenty one thousand patients and still counting. Uh, like we started in two thousand three. Uh, we started, uh, like the trust was built in 2003 and uh, we started our patient care in 2006. Till then, till now, we have uh, 21, we have catered to 21, it, it's 22 now. <laughs> so and, uh, that that's the lives we have touched till now. Uh, next is, um, this is the helpline that we run here. It's called telehealth. Uh, uh, this is the number that we are, uh, you know, we, uh, we have uh, uh, through to which you can call uh, for uh, for you people. It would be um, for any advice on pain management or palliative care. For pain uh, for care receivers, it would be uh, palliative care service that they can uh, they need. So over the phone, we'll be assessing their situation and then uh, guiding them with the. Um, uh, with these, um, with symptom management, whatever, whatever their problem is uh, in palliative care. It's a palliative care helpline. So any query on palliative care will be addressed through this uh, number. 
so you can you can note down this number and for it's available in four languages english tamil hindi and malayalam so we have doctors here nurses here social workers who will be answering to your queries it's a pan india helpline so anywhere from uh, anywhere in, from india you can call next we'll move on to the educate um, model which is uh, uh, we have these courses uh, running here under tips uh, for doctors nurses allied professionals everyone who are interested in palliative care we try to train them in palliative care in whatever model they uh, want so customized training programs are also available <laughs> if they permit <laughs> <laughs> yes of course our uh, mission is to ensure that the news of the good news of palliative medicine reaches every nook and corner so shall we move on to the yeah, next, yeah, slide? next so next comes the facilitate part uh, which is <clears throat> uh, my division <laughs> uh, this is what the work that we do uh, now um, the philosophy of palliative care division is to integrate palliative care in three levels of uh, health care. Uh, first is primary, secondary and tertiary. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we have four regional coordinators at four regions. So our region is uh, differentiated as North, Northeast, Central and South. Uh, North is taken care by Rajendra, Rajendra Dad. Northeast plus West Bengal is, uh, you know, taken care by Ron. Ron. Ron is the name that we call him. It's called Ron to Sangma. Uh, in central region, we have Sunanda. And in south, we have Vishnu. So for south uh, queries, uh, you can either get in touch with Vishnu. And because I am here, I am also looking into uh, south region right now. So you can get in touch with any of us for any query, region specific queries, we can get in touch with us. We'll be sharing the, uh, the contact numbers with all of you through the chat box or through the WhatsApp group that we have. So, uh, and we are, uh, our leader is Shalini. She is also based out in uh, Trivandrum. So me, Shalini and Vishnu are there in Trivandrum and rest of the people are working in their region. So uh, Sunanda is working from Pune. Uh, Rajendra is working from Uttarakhand and Ron is working from Assam. So uh, they are into their regions only. Um, so now coming into the uh, uh, state facilitation objectives. Uh, these are the five objectives that state facilitation divisions um, uh, has. Is one is catalyzing new palliative care centers. That's what we help. We help in end-to-end -end facilitation for catalyzing center across various categories like government, charitable, sustainable, and for-profit. Uh, next, we assist in opioid um, uh, accessibility by facilitating and getting the RMI certified. Um, we, we help in getting your institute uh, certified as an RMI. It's a long procedure that I, I have already mentioned. So in a way, uh, opioid availability session, you'll have that entire session uh, and uh, we help our stakeholders go through each uh, documentation, uh, all documentation that you need to uh, have, do before uh, getting certified as an RMI, all the uh, facilitation to en um, enter these, um, you know, there are many application, uh, many things that are to be entered into the application forms. So we'll be facilitating you for, uh, for it. Uh, we enable uh, palliative care learning in medical institutes. So as we all know that education is a, uh, plays a major role in delivering palliative care. We try to work with medical institutes to provide, um, sorry, to involve palliative care in the undergraduate curriculum for doctors. Um, here we work with trainers. They then train their students in palliative care. So that what, that's what happens in the um, program and it's called faculty development program. Uh, next is we work with uh, stakeholders to help build community engagement that um, I was talking about the volunteer engagement so that ha that's also uh, facilitated by us. We help uh, them mobilize volunteers from their community and uh, uh, we go and create awareness among the public uh, get similar interest people together 
and then they form groups like link center that i was uh, explaining you earlier here the ma major thing that you need to understand is the community volunteers take the ownership of taking palliative care across their region that's what the uh, major aspect is uh, like the community has community volunteers have the ownership they take the ownership it's not palim india going and giving the services it's the community volunteers going and giving the services so for you it would it won't be you going and giving services it would be the responsibility of the community to uh, get the care for their uh, their community so that's what happens next is uh, develop pain free hospitals uh, this is this is also an objective in budding state right now uh, here we try to uh, develop a hospital wherein any patient that enters for any treatment is assessed or treated uh, by the pain score that he has the pain score is measured by a scale which ranges from 1 to 10 10 being the highest so so any patient entering a hospital would be first assessed by the pain that he has and then offered a treatment. So that's our uh, fifth objective. It's, it's, it's in a budding state right now. But even then, we have two pain-free hospitals in India. One is in um, Kachar, Assam, and one is um, in Dehradun, CRI uh, SHRU Hospital. Uh, this is the national presence we have. Uh, we have worked with uh, 25 states and three union territories till now. We have worked with the NHMs of these states for the implementation of NDPS Act. We are still lacking behind for three states. But, uh, there are palliative care centers, but we haven't worked with the NHMs. So that's why those are white there. Uh, otherwise, it's um, green. All over green, and the green states, we have worked with the states and union territories. We have catalyzed five uh, training centers uh, in India. Uh, we have done uh, 10 on-site foundation training. On-site foundation training in the sense, uh, if you have a batch of few, uh, you know, uh, uh, professionals who want to get trained in palliative care, we come there at your region and conduct an on-site training program. So that's what the on-site foundation training means. We have done it for 10 sites. Um, as, as I was telling, we have two pain-free hospitals. Uh, the faculty development program, we have done it for six sites till now. Uh, we have catalyzed 70 palliative care centers across India. Um, we have uh, Hamrahi sites, 27 Hamrahi sites. So Hamrahi is... Uh, project where we are working with APLI. APLI is Australasian Palliative Link International. This is for mentoring the palliative care centers across India. And as on today, the mentors of APLI, APLI have mentored 27 sites. So they it's, it's a kind of mentoring the uh, existing palliative care centers. So you, uh, if you are willing, uh, if you are a palliative care center, you will first undergo a Eco Hamrahi program and then individually APLI team will be mentoring you uh, to improve your services. That's what happens in Hamrahi. Next is hands-on training sites. Uh, here, um, so we believe that uh, just undergoing a theory sessions on palliative care doesn't, uh, you know, fulfill the purpose, doesn't serve the purpose. Uh, we would like to have you go uh, through a hands-on experience as well so during COVID, we were not able to uh, you know conduct on-site training programs anywhere neither in trandam nor anywhere else in india so we started uh, the uh, online programs and then um, this requirement came in wherein a hands-on training we had to look for hands-on training partners so right now we have 50 uh, institutes institutes which are a part, uh, you know, uh, which have collaborated with us as hands-on training partners. So after this training, this online training, you can go to any of these sites. These, the names of these sites will be shared by the training team with you. So we have 50 sites. 
you can go uh, you can search the sites based on your location so every every state will have a hands on training except for madhya pradesh i think we don't have a center there but yeah uh, we have centers across india uh, you can go to any of these states uh, these, these sites and get a exposure in palliative care hands on exposure in palliative care so that can be done next we have like i was telling that one of the objectives of uh, palim india uh, state palim india is to give uh, access to uh, facilitate the access of opioids uh, till, uh, till this year like for, counting from 2021 we have uh, we have facilitated 13 sites uh, for accessing opioids so we have helped 13 sites get rmi uh, license uh, so it takes two months so that's why uh, it's a small number <laughs> so i'm done with my lecturing <laughs> Any questions that uh, I, I'll show you the maps uh, next. Uh, these are the <clears throat> uh, you know states where we have worked with NHMs. Um, next is uh, next. These are the states where we have worked with state con uh, state drug controllers. Um, next. These are the training centers catalyzed by us. Um, uh, these are the sites where we have done on-site foundation. Uh, this uh, PPT will be shared. I'm just showing it to you at, for a, at a glance. These are the pain-free hospitals that uh, we had done. Uh, faculty development program done for six sites. Uh, these are the validity case centers which are catalyzed by us. So if you can go through, you'll find some some states in your some sites in your region as well. So these are the sites. Uh, these are the Hamrahi sites, and next is hands-on training partners. So any of the centers you can go and have hands-on training. Any of these centers. Now these are the centers where we have facilitated opioids. So thank you. And when Vandana, Dr. Vandana, you have raised your hand. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I have a, a query. Yeah. Ma'am, uh, regarding this on-site yeah. training, unfortunately, when I was seeing the maps, Karnataka is in uh, white, red, and uh, I'm from Bangalore. So I am really unhappy about that. But uh, ma'am, I just want to know, suppose whenever we are going for on-site training, do we, what is the procedure that we have to follow? Do we have to send a request to Tips India and then they guide us to go to that un, uh, site through a, a letter, recommendation letter, or we go there and we show our certificate that we have done this training and now we have come for on-site training what exactly uh, are we supposed to do now do you explain them the process of the training <laughs> so uh, you can directly approach them uh, uh -huh. you, don't, you don't need our recommendation we are already partnered with them so okay, ma you don't need uh, you don't need any recommendation we will provide you the contact person me and uh, email id so you can uh, directly get in touch with them just show them that you are you have completed the fcpm program and you want a hands-on training uh, experience at your center so that's how it works okay. just adding to that uh, like the process is uh, anyways you need to complete the fcpm this online foundation course before opting for the hands-on training so once yes. the first uh, the certifications are out we'll be share we will already be sharing the list of the hands-on training sites maybe today or tomorrow the list will be shared with you and once this course is over you can just go through that list identify the site where you are comfortable with having the hands-on training and get in touch with them once you get okay. in touch with them the collaborators the in charges there will get in uh, touch with our team and the rest will be done that is okay. the process and for Karnataka, it looks white because we didn't work with the NHM, that's why. Otherwise, palliative care centers are there in Karnataka. So it's just that we didn't work with the NHM, so we have kept it uh, red and uh, white. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you so much. And maybe Dr. Vantana can help us yeah. in uh, getting yeah. it. <laughs> yes, ma'am, definitely. I am working in a medical college here. I'm a professor in anesthesiology. 
so i will definitely need your guidance and help when we start a palliative care here in our hospital okay. most welcome. thank you thank you so much yeah. anybody else uh madam has it has the palliative care protocols been part of our uh, training of undergraduates and postgraduate students just out of curiosity sorry sorry i didn't understand uh no the see now various aspects of uh, patient care has been brought into part of the undergraduate curriculum so you were mentioning about the uh, training process for undergraduate curriculum which i think you have conducted in uh, jipmer pondicherry etc yes so uh, uh, has the government put up some sort of a Uh, rule like that that uh, palliative care has to be there in all the uh, uh, education institutions no no um, okay. it's it's not included in the curriculum right now but uh, it's there some uh, it's just a definition in some uh, books that's it so uh, yes ma'am so, uh, can i share something ma'am actually now uh, since 2019 we are having competency based medicine that has been introduced by the nmc so as per the 2000 guidelines of nmc palliative care is a part of ug training in which some lectures are supposed to focus on palliative care they have given specific i think uh, there are uh, numbers i think there are supposed to be at least two lectures which they get in eight sem in their uh, eighth term they are supposed to get trained some background about palliative medicine has to be there in their fine third year before, uh, during their clinicals may not be hands on but a background what exactly palliative care is That's and small some way. aspects yeah, yeah yes ma'am introduction kind yeah. of introduction to palliative care that is mandatory now as per nmc in ug curriculum we do take lectures for ugs actually on palliative care so uh, but it is in a very very primitive only an introduction not we cannot call it like some curriculum or uh, detailed uh, this but it is there ma'am in uh, the present competence based medicine uh, batch which is starting from 2018 ma'am okay thank you so much dr vandana for that uh, you know piece of knowledge <laughs> i also that uh, had heard this year 2019 from dr sri devi unfortunately she could not make to this session yeah. today otherwise i think uh, she would have, she able would have to, uh, answered the very thrown more light into that <laughs> anybody else anything I I have seen something in the chat box. Uh, some questions. Okay. Will you have a list of trained person and can refer us where they may be a need? Yes, Revati, Doctor Revati. Yes, we do have a list of trained people. So that's how the telehealth works. Uh, for uh, are you are you asking for palliative care or for uh you know building a team uh doctor revati if you could unmute and uh actually good afternoon everybody i am asking for palliative care only because okay. yeah. Uh, yeah. i have so, not joined any team so far okay so i was just interested uh, whether i can join any team like i am based in chennai Okay. Okay. From that aspect, because uh, I won't. I mean, I'm not able to. I won't be able to start a team as such at present. Okay. So uh, we do have the list of uh, palliative care centers across India in on our website. Oh. Uh -huh. So, uh, so there you will see everything. Uh, what services they provide? Um, who is the contact person? If they have morphine or not? Uh, the address. the contact details email id is everything the website so uh, you can go state wise it's done in state you know by forwarded in state wise so you can go to wherever you get a query for palliative care you can uh, go and see state wise um, the list of palliative care centers that are in you know uh, are there in india so 
if uh, you could see the screen here this is our official website okay aliamindia.org and towards the right bottom you can see this directory so you can so, click on uh, that. I will just try to click on that. Just give me a moment. Oh. I will see later anyway. No problem. We have time. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not able to move my cursor down. Ah. So this is uh, how the directory will look like. I think I have a list in Tamil Nadu. I think it was sent yes. to some time back during one of the sessions. Uh, if suppose, for example, since Dr. Devati had asked the question, if I click on the Tamil Nadu, it will look like this. So now here you can see which hospital, the address, what all services they provide and the contact details the trained person who okay i can contact them directly yeah directly directly okay. if you can see for example the second number in that is of can care foundation and the contact of dr shafika ban if you could remember she was our faculty for the last session her right. number is given there okay. okay so this is how it works okay. you can tell them that you got the reference from uh, our website okay. um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Welcome. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Can I ask one more question, ma'am? Yeah, yeah. No uh, problem. Ma'am, ma <laughs> uh, ma uh, regarding the funding, since uh, as you said, it's uh, not a profit making or generally a, a program that uh, not many would be interested in. Are there uh, specific organizations or uh, some uh, NGOs or uh, some uh, bodies which are interested in helping funding for uh, palliative care uh, yes. Yes. like the, uh, uh, if that can be shared with us ma'am then uh, it will be easy for us when we are uh, mm -hmm. we get some assistance with respect to funding also patients also if uh, that can yeah, be shared uh, we, we can we can share um right now uh, the far you know we actually search for organizations that's uh so we have a resource mobilization um, team here so they search for csr grants that are coming up so they have access to that so that's how we come to know what all uh, um, you know grants are there for palliative care not uh, it, it might not be specific to palliative care it, it might be geriatric care or disability care or something like that so whichever okay. falls un under our uh, you know a service delivery we yes, apply for that and then and if you are applying for csr you will have to have a registration under csr so that's the first point that you need to understand mm -hmm. um, you'll have to have a csr registration number before you go for any csr uh funding you know proposals like before you uh, write a proposal for csr you'll have to have a registration number in cs um, you know you have to get registered under csr uh, for receiving csr grants so that's the first point then we can apply for there are uh, organizations which, which fund for palliative for example now sipla is funding for uh palliative care so uh there are so there, there, there's a time when they open up these grants it's not like every time they'll have these grants there are certain time periods wherein they open up so uh, that's how it works thank you welcome i have already shared the contact details of the regional coordinators in the whatsapp group so anybody who is interested to initiate the conversation can get in touch with us. So, <coughs> there's something in the chat box. Okay. Oh. Let's see. Okay. Yes, uh, Dr. Giriza, 
Priya, we do offer fellowship in palliative care. Actually, uh, it is in budding state. We have started uh, the one year program of global fellowship in care, palliative care in collaboration with Kuhn University. University. Yeah. And uh, if you are interested, please do uh, DM us uh, separately so that I can provide you with uh, the contact person's details. It's, it's a one year program, sir. It's a, okay, Girija, right? It's it's a one year program, ma'am. You can see the details in our website also. Otherwise, Shri Priya is there to help you with the details directly. Any other queries we can address? Uh, if not, I think maybe we can wind up for the day. <laughs> Thank and, you for listening to me. <laughs> uh, well, personally, Aarti is very passionate about uh, her works and uh, very cooperative, you know, whenever you, like, even today also, because of a uh, schedule clash, I had connected with her maybe after 12 o'clock <laughs> to confirm today's session and she was only really helpful and really willing to go for today's session. That is uh, how passionate she is. <clears throat> so if uh, anyone of you have any nothing else to share, maybe we can wind up for the day. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Dr. Vandana. So um, this is Sri Priya. Is yes. Dr. Sajid you on? Uh, yes. uh, Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. Uh, very motivating, in fact. Uh, at the same time, uh, challenging to take up this responsibility. Uh, hope we'll yeah. be in touch with you. Yeah, we will yeah, definitely we be in touch with you. Yeah, we are there to help you only. We are there because thank we you, learn through you. many failures, right? Uh, we we had many trial and errors uh, that we did as an organization. We don't want you to suffer like that. So that's why we are there to help you at any point of time. Always ready. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> with that note, this is Sri Priya along with Ms. Sarathi signing off from the Tips Echo Hub. Regarding the hands on site training uh, details, that will be shared with you soon. Please do go through that. And uh, also, the free teleconsultation helpline numbers, those brochures will also be shared with you. So, please uh, do make use of it for yourself and uh, for your loved ones as well. Maybe you can share it with your active group so that everyone comes to know that there is such a facility of free consultation in palliative care whenever it is required. And with that note, this is Ripriya signing off from the Tips Echo Hub along with Ms. Arati. See you in the next session with another interesting topic and an eminent faculty. Till then, everyone, take care, stay safe, be happy. Bye-bye.